Well, more problems on the trailer. Uh, this grill is the grill that came with the trailer. And uh, keep it covered, came with a cover. We keep it covered whenever it's not being used. And I'm really disappointed with it for several reasons. But first reason is, you see it's already rusting on the top here. So the finish is really poor. And the other thing that stinks about it is it's very difficult to clean properly. It's clean now because I took this all apart and cleaned it. There's a hole in the bottom of the grill there which lets water drain out. So if you want to clean it and rough flush everything out. The problem is because it's mounted on this plate, this platform right here, you get very little clearance. So all the garbage just kind of falls down in there. So that's not the greatest uh, design. But the other thing is it's just very poor quality. You can see the... Uh, the only thing that was on the inside that's supposed to keep it from rusting, I guess, is the finish, which is coming off after a good cleaning. I guess you're not supposed to use a wire brush to clean the inside of this, which is kind of silly. Um, this whole burner assembly, to take this burner guard out to get underneath there and clean underneath there, you have to get to these screws. Well, guess what? The screws are completely hidden by the plate. So to clean this really well, what I did was I removed the two big bolts that are on the side here. Took the whole grill, flipped it over, took four screws out, removed this piece, and one big screw that allows me to flip the burner up out of the way, get all of the grease and stuff that was in there that had congealed in there, clean that out, and uh, put it all back together. Only to discover, when I went to fire it up for the first time this season, I actually have a propane leak. Uh, it's a leak right here near the, uh, this isn't a regulator, this is a uh, just a, a valve. Um, and it's leaking somewhere over here. Now, I think I might be able to just tighten the fitting underneath there and fix that. But, did I mention I hate this grill? <laughs> the other thing is, this is the, uh, this is the grate that came with the grill. It's a lousy design because... Um, when you're cooking it's got this warmer rack but what happens is you're trying to get underneath here with the spatula and get your uh, your hamburgers out and you get it's kind of tough to get in there so you are kind of relegated to just using this front burner right here and this for warming this whole back section here is kind of not very useful because of the way that that's not very uh, uh, it's, it's obstructed so the other thing is you notice this is a really cheap grill whatever the coating is on here it rusts. Uh, this actually looks a lot better than it did because I wire wheeled. Uh, I took my cup wire wheel on my angle grinder and ran over it. But I, I just I don't like this grill, so I'm going to try and swap this grill out. And then I got another problem over here. Now I had uh, winterized this uh, trailer's plumbing system, and what I just did was I flushed out the. Uh, the remnants of the little bit of antifreeze that might still be in there. I'd like to flush it out before I get to the RV, uh, to the first campground. And I'm glad I did that because then I found a couple of problems. Uh, actually, I just realized I forgot the key for this side. But inside here, there is a, uh, a spigot, a hot and cold spigot with a quick snap connect faucet. I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Basically, it came with this little curly Q hose, which is nice. And it's a snap connect. Uh, and on the other side, you've actually got the spigots in there, the hot and cold. So you can get hot and cold water out of that tap on the other side there just by snapping this hose in place. It's really handy because it's near where you're going to be doing, it's on that side there where you're going to be doing work. And you might actually, uh, when you go to your dump station, if you get a little something on you, uh, by accident, you can reach right over and just grab the hose and hose yourself off. Um, they also put one on this side, but on this side there are no valves. This side, basically, as soon as you click in, you have water and you just control it with the handle at the end here. Which would be fine, except for the first time, I've got leaks. And this is only our second year with this trailer. So, you're talking about, that's our second year with that grill and it already looks like garbage. So, once again, we got some issues with quality. Um, but that's a common theme with RVs from what I understand. So on the other side, what happened was when I turned the water on to flush everything, I noticed it was leaking on the fitting here. 
and then I was wondering why it was leaking, but then when I shut the spigots off, it stopped leaking. So I realized it was just this quick connect that's leaking. So I said, well, you know, we're leaving for camp in a few days. If I don't get time to fix that before we leave, it's okay. I'll just make sure the spigots are always off, which I normally do anyways. I don't normally keep the hose hooked up all the time like this. That's fine with that one. Problem is, I come over on this side and I see all water leaking down the side of the trail. You can still see a tiny trail of it collects on here and dripping down I'm like well what's going on there and then I noticed that this one was leaking so if I uh, pressurize the water system in the trailer like when we hook up at the park in the next uh, weekend what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a constant leak coming out of here unless I address that so I want to see if I can do something about that so I noticed a couple of things. One of the things I noticed was it doesn't matter whether or not I have a hose clicked in there or I have a hose out of there, it still leaks. I also noticed this is very hard to turn. This is the equivalent of the You're able to push this in with your fingers to disconnect the hose. And you can see it's stuck in there right now and I can't even move it. Very hard to move. I unlocked the other side just so you could see what I was talking about. So here's that quick connect on this side. This one moves a little bit more freely, has a little more give to it. Uh, you can see how this spins? That's how the other one used to work. But this one also leaks. And it's not leaking where this screws onto here, from what I can tell. It appears to be leaking in the fitting itself. So I think that's just a cheaply made fitting. And I'm going to take it apart and see if there's any serviceable washers or O-rings in there. But I'm going to focus on this one here because this is the one that's going to give me the most trouble if I don't get it fixed before the weekend. So I'm going to try and use channel locks here to there we go, push on this. All right, so I was able to uh, push this in to get it to disengage. You can see that still sticks on there. There's something definitely wrong there. So it looks like the way to service this is to remove this snap ring. So I got my cheap auto parts store snap ring pliers. I'm hoping I can just grab it with that. I'm going to use two hands so that I, uh, if it goes flying, I won't lose. Now it's a little tricky, but it can be done. And now, that should be spring. I'm surprised that doesn't pop right off. But again, it's stuck on there. I'm wondering if an O-ring has gotten out of position. It's jammed in there. All right, so that pops right off. I don't see anything in there. Well, I may have just made this whole project irrelevant because what happened was I touched that little brass spring and it caused two pins to fall out. I was able to catch one of them and that's it right there. And the other one though, it fell and I've been looking for about 15 minutes now and I think when it fell it hit, I think it hit here, bounced off of here and went flying. And I can't even use a magnet to try and find it if I wanted to because it's a stainless steel pin and the magnet probably won't affect it. Although I'm going to try that anyways. So that's not good. I can actually see I think part of my problem if I look at that inner brass part right there it looks like there's two o-rings. There's one o-ring on the outside here that's responsible for sealing the, uh, the nipple when you insert it in there keep water from leaking out when you're using it and then the other one if you look inside there I don't know if you can tell or not but there's a brass cup that's probably spring-loaded and what happens is when you insert the nipple it pushes that cup in well when you take the nipple out the cup is supposed to close on an o-ring by the looks of it and you can just see up in the corner there you can see the edge of the o-ring is exposed so it's actually out of position and pinched in there so I'm quickly realizing that even if I wanted to service this, I have to unscrew it from the plumbing in the trailer, which means I've got to take this plastic a scutcheon off and unscrew it from the plumbing. Look at how long these screws are holding this thing in. Oh man, they really glued that on oh, this so cool. oh, This is ridiculously uh tight the way to screw it out. I tried getting a screwdriver in there, that was a miracle. I'm going to try and get a knife blade and see if I can't cut away at some of that. After quite a bit of prying, gently, I'm going to try and get the screwdriver out. <coughs> completely breaking it. Now, I can do it now. So, same thing. So, right here. Alright, I 
plastic for the shape. Uh, no, which makes me think they're not going to turn. This side. Well, I have to pull the hose out to the plant because I don't want to fall back into that hole because then I'll have to go underneath the kitchen cabinet and take the drawer off and get to it. So I'm getting it off here. So I think I'm going to do this as a solar assembly. Take the washer out of here and put it on this side. I'll do a well, we'll check down here. Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's the back of the screen.